came here. The, the nice thing was there were uh, closets and mirrors in the offices the because they were all no. dorm rooms. The bad thing was that it was still the material from the 1910s. Okay, we're live. Okay, I call this meeting to order. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission on August 23rd. Uh, I'll ask for a roll call. I'll start with myself. John Sampin, here. Will Roddy Bush, here. Jeff Howes, here. And uh, we are um, disappointed to hear that Chris Moen has been ill. Uh, we send her our best wishes. She's... Um, fighting something uh, for several weeks now. So we hope she'll, she'll be joining us uh, next month. Uh, Christina, Christina Tracy also cannot be here today, our fifth member, and she is uh, on some business trip. Was it Cleveland? I've forgotten where she was. I'm not but, sure. I don't but, remember. But she, she was also unable to come. Okay. Um, approval of minutes. Do we have a motion to amend or accept the minutes? I'd make a motion that we approve the minutes for July 26th meeting. I will second. Um, everyone in favor, let's just say aye. 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 Since Jeff wrote it. Uh, thank you for uh, not <laughs> making me vote for myself. And, and thank you for uh, writing those. That was great. Pretty good. Administrative items. Next meeting will be, um, by the way, I'm filling in as the vice uh, chair uh, while Chris is out. For the uh, for this meeting, uh, next meeting uh, we propose September twenty seventh, four o'clock. Does that work for at least our members that are here? Okay. Um, and uh, as letter B, we have historic preservation ordinance discussion regarding landscaping. We kind of left that up in the air last time. We did touch upon that. Um, I like what Heather's put together on uh, on it too, with a. This was a she, the memo from August twelfth. Is it right? Right. So she's got the document ready to go to city council, it looks like. I read through it, and I think it reads reads good. I thought so as well, yeah. Do we, uh, Heather, uh, you're our uh, parliamentarian. Uh, do we need to vote on, on, on accepting? Yes, this? you would make an official recommendation to city council. Okay. It would then kick it to planning commission for a review. Okay. And then who would kick it back? With their recommendation to city council, who would hold a public hearing? Okay. So, any discussion? Jeff, you're comfortable I'm, with, I'm with comfortable the wording? Yeah. Okay. I, did, I don't. Did, did anybody hear from Chris or Christina about it? Uh, from Chris, she emailed. Let me find her email. He actually gave us a list of her responses to the agenda items. Oh, but it can't be displayed. Yeah, I don't. Now. I don't think she, at least in that last memo, mentioned anything about landscaping. Oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm fine with the uh, the wording as proposed. Shall we? Uh, I'd make a motion that we approve the. The document to go to city council, that's uh, chapter 158, uh, the revisions in 158.03 and 158.08 for uh, related to landscaping. You want to? Uh, a second. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Propose uh, in. in in the negative, no one will vote. I think we are um, we're sending that forward. Thank you. Okay. So, number four, local designations. 
Um, we have a little bit of news about University Hall. Um, a note from Chris Moen saying that she talked to a campus operations or will, she's saying there will be some type of celebration once the West Campus entry way is done, but she's not aware of what and when it's still under construction. Then in a, in a note from Heather today, uh, finding the <laughs> announcement of the gateway dedication um, for September 17th um, at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, just uh, one further thing about this. I did send a message uh, um, to the president, uh, President Rogers, asking that we as a as a, a commission be part of a celebration uh, and an opening of that um, that gateway. And I'm still awaiting a response. It's been almost a month. So uh, I I'm willing to write him again. Um, it may not be a possibility since it looks like they have their at least their time set, but but we can we can try to uh, be part of that. What do you think? If not, we could just maybe do a separate one at University okay. Hall. Yeah, which might give us more of a profile, yeah. such as it will be. And then um, kind of point to William Hall and say maybe that's the next one. Yeah. Uh, would you? So, like, would you? I, I don't know if I'd prefer that if if they can still fit us in with the general. Yeah, um, we we know there will be a crowd there for yeah. that, that opening, and and if we do our own separate um, short ceremony, there might might not be quite as um, visible. So, shall I write write the president? Are you agreeable to that? I think yeah. Yes. If we work it in, we try to get, get it, it done. Get it done. And... Okay, I will do that. Um. Also, you noticed um, the court welcome back party on Court Street, which yeah. ties into that alumni gateway, which would be Friday, September 16th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And I think we, um, hopefully some of us can attend uh, both of those events. Certainly the, uh, if there's something uh, from the commission on, on, Saturday the seventeenth. Uh, we should make an Let effort us to know, try to yeah. there. Let us know. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Any other um, thoughts about University Hall? Uh, thank, let's give a thanks to Will for you're welcome preparing um, an inventory uh, with some some great photos. Um, and we, I don't know if we will be sharing that, but it's nice to have have that. Um, that, that finished and, and prepared to go forward. Oh, it's on file with it. Yeah. Okay. When it's on file, it's on file. Do, how are we filing those? We keep in record like a. Yeah, we have it in our office. On, on, on digital records um, on your computers. Uh, is it a paper record? How do we, how are we doing that? Well, right now it's sort of both. I know it's a straight answer. We have the inventories. I have on my computer. You Plus, we print them out sheet. with the notebook. Yeah, we have the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Right. We Eventually, have we'll have a GIS system fully built out, but it's just, okay. we have a lot of projects going on, so that's yeah. going to happen eventually. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the Wood County Courthouse, former jail, building inventory. Any um, discussion about, about that? Ross, I don't think we... Yeah, well, I sent a draft that I started to Will and Chris to review. Did you get that? I I hadn't, so I, I'll look. Okay, I can send it again, but I started what I knew, but it needs building quite a bit. I know it has a very extensive history. There is a web page dedicated to it on the auditor website that I thought we could use some of those facts, um, but I think it's a very fascinating building and the inventory is going to take some time. And probably others to review. But we have a start. Thank you. What website is it that you said? Uh, the Wood County Auditor. Auditor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anyone we else we should involve in, in that inventory? Anybody that historically would have information? Yeah, I do have a couple people I'm thinking of, but I think we should get it as far as we can get it, I'm thinking. 
to minimize their workload and then have them review it. Okay. That was my thought. Good. Yeah, because in the inventory, there's not too much other than like the architectural, like a description. So I think like on Needle Hall, we did a separate document and plus the inventory. There was one that went into quite a bit about the history and then because the inventory doesn't really have a whole lot of right, right. spots to put information about the history. Yeah. And I think that history is what I find most fascinating. You know, some of the special details that yeah, have happened yeah. over the years. Yeah, yeah. I just titled it additional info towards the back. And that's where I started some of that information. Mm -hmm. At some point, so, that's what I was even thinking. Mm -hmm. We probably maybe need to modify the inventory. So whether to put it like that up front. But there's a couple other spots where you have to fill in something or put NA, mm -hmm. not applicable, but NA is not there as a choice. It is in some places, mm -hmm. but in other places it probably needs to be. So at some point I thought there's like some very minor changes need to be made and then maybe a revision date because it's sort of like a living document. I could mm -hmm. see it keep getting better and then put that architectural features or the history up in the front. So you, you have that instead of a separate Instead of a separate document, it could be on, mm -hmm. sure. on the inventory. Okay, let's examine that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, some point in the future. We'll have to find somebody that can make that change on, on, the, on the digital. And I think Chris program. did the original. Did she? It's a okay. little hard to work with in a way. Sometimes yeah, getting, I know. you can't get the lines off or, you know. Yeah, yeah I've added some things because I added the Sanborn maps. I thought those are really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And so I did that with the courthouse draft because mm -hmm. you can compare when they, you know, took down the old or the original courthouse and then put up the new one. And then what's around it, I think is interesting too. There used to be, you know, houses on that site. And I think it's interesting to add the, the sandboard maps too. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, and then I, there's some interesting facts, you know, Jimmy Hoffa visited the courthouse in 1937 to get a marriage license yeah. and married his wife there the same day. Yeah. So it's the kind of things wow. that I think wow. make Bowling Green unique. The connection. I didn't realize yeah. there was that connection with Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> Were you there? I mean, I feel like you're. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, 328 Court Street. Um, this, this is on to the Planning Commission. This is a note from um, Chris Moen. Um, for their September 7th meeting. Uh, and Chris writes that she anticipates they will send a recommendation to the city council that even, which in turn the council would then set for their required public hearing. So that's that one's moving forward. Um, Boomtown strategic planning and goal, uh, that's, that's um, item D under local designations. Um, and we just put this in there. I'd like to keep putting that in with Chris's permission each time to remind us that we, that is a goal down the road. I don't know that we have much to discuss today, um, to, except to remind ourselves that, mm -hmm. that uh, some, at some point in the, in the future, we, we need to grapple with that and try to push that forward. Map it out. <clears throat> okay. Number five. Hi, friends of the HPC. Thank you, our friends, for being here today. Um, is Cheryl here? No, she is not. Um, she wanted to share information about a conference that she went uh, went to. Um, so perhaps we'll, we can uh, share that next time. Um, Buildings of the month. This is all again notes uh, from Chris Moen. Buildings of the month have been determined for the remainder of the year. Rose, Cheryl, and Dick uh, have offered their assistance. Thank you for uh, for helping us with that. And Trinity uh, uh, Church will be at the end of this month. And Rose uh, happily wrote that description for us. So thank you for doing that. Do we have that list somewhere? Um, um, or have I just not been paying attention? Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Okay, should we wait till the end? Um, or would you like to? 
You want to share that with us now? Why don't we just do that? Okay, whenever you're ready, okay? Um, any other updates from our friends? Okay. Um, I'll be one to come yeah. up. So yeah. thank you, sorry. Could benefit from it. I've been working on two things. Uh, one is my own home um, at 201 Ridge Street. I found out that its original address was 810 Prospect Street because the door was on the front hmm. and uh, changed that That's around. Interesting. Um, it was owned by uh, S.L. Bowden at one time, which was probably the Bowden Edition property line. Um, a Benjamin Abbott, who was a judge and justice of the peace and mayor uh, lived there at one time. His daughter owned it uh, probably after his death. There was an Alan Muir that owned it and um, he was a newspaper. I don't know if he was an editor. I haven't done that, dug that deep yet. Back in 1897. Then a Cheney bought it and he owned the hardware. His daughter, this is where the Van Tassel comes in, married uh, a Van Tassel, C.S. Van Tassel. And then I don't know if he died then and she took it over. Uh, but then it was back in the Cheney family again. Then it goes down. Uh, to uh, Florence Baird, who was a university professor, in English, and uh, Richard Carpenter, who was the chair of the English department. So we have uh, Judge Benjamin Abbott. Uh, he was a lawyer, 15-year Justice of the Peace. Uh, John Cheney, hardware uh, dealer. How is that spelled? The I'm sorry? How is Cheney spelled in this case? It's spelled C-H-A-N-E-Y. Okay. His daughter, married C.S. Van Tassel. And then I also found C.S. Van Tassel owned a different house on Prospect, which was the white, that white rental next to the Victorian three down on the uh, west side of the street. The mm -hmm. white, mm -hmm. he, he lived there also and owned mm -hmm. that. So did, did Richard Carpenter live in your house and then move next door, or how did that yes. work? Oh, I, yes, I, I didn't did. know that because I knew him when he lived. And that that home is a Montgomery Ward's house yeah. Yeah. that was bought out of a catalog. What's the address of that one? Uh, 205. 205. Hmm. Prospect? Uh, uh, Ridge. No, 205 Ridge. Ridge. That's the Montgomery Ward. What's that one? And um... So the Van Tassel connection then to uh, um, the founder of the um, mission, the Presbyterian mission on the river, his Isaac Van Tassel, and the nephew was Isaac Van Tassel II, whose daughter is this Van Tassel had married Martha Martindale, daughter of Elza and Eugene Storrs Conant. So there's a couple of great things in that. Mm -hmm. Martindale. With the Martindale family. Considered yeah. the original settlers, right? Correct. The Martindales. Yeah. yeah. So I'm still kind of pecking at that. So what, what was the original date of your... Home. Do you know when it was built? I'm thinking 1888 or something. Oh, okay. in, in something in there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. By yeah. these deeds, they did some things with um, taking the sidewalk. You know where you'll see minus four yards. And I understand that they measured from the center of the street at each cross section, and then went over 
so many feet and then adopted the sidewalk and then your property line went i actually have two lots uh, carpenter's property was the same one 319 oh okay and, and then they uh -huh. did that and then beard who was a, a mayor next door he's 320 and then it says on his minus 10 feet the south 10 feet and then that's part of mine because i think that was his florence was his daughter oh okay beard, yeah. and uh mr beard was a mayor and he was in the spanish american war and lost a leg um previous owners of the house had pictures of him i don't know where they are and they had pictures of my house with a funny roof in the front and that was the front door and then something come around the side was the baldoffs are you in touch with them anymore i think he moved out of town yeah he moved a long time ago yeah well i bought the home from uh beard's grandson it was kind of funny he turned out to be the vice president of occidental petroleum company and I'm down at Don Titus's office. He get dickering on the phone with this vice president of Occidental Oil. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. But he gave it up. He was tired of messing with it. So. I know the plaque on your house says 1893, but it says circa, right? So oh, I I put that I, on. I there. thought you yeah you had put I didn't that know, on, but you weren't sure. Yeah. Yeah, because the first time I'd gone to the courthouse, it was it, this one here, where this mirror must have owned it. I found it that there was something there in 1897. So, but the, the, this Abbott goes back farther than that. And Bowden started it and he owned it in 1871. He owned the land. Mm. The, just think. So, Three. anyway. Thank you. The second thing I'd like to present is uh, the sneak preview uh, building tour, 42608. The town had a, a uh, walking tour. And there's a website down here, but I haven't gone to it yet. I just noticed that www.downtownbg.org. I don't know if there's anything left at it, but that's a particular date. They uh, opened up um, the public library, the Masonic building, the Milliken Hotel, the United Methodist Church. Um, South Main Street Common Space. I don't know what that is. But the Masonic Building, there's a little thing here. I don't know if I could turn this in, maybe get on the list for billing a month, maybe next year or something. Sure. Um, it was constructed in 1903 by Jackson Mercer, and it became the Mercer Block. Charles and Maud Whitaker Furniture Company was the, the uh, first owner. Uh, purchased the Masonic building was purchased in 1920 for $30,000 by the Bowling Green Masonic Temple Company, and that still exists. Uh, I'm on, on that board. What year was that? Did you say? I'm Did sorry? you say the year that the Masons... when it was purchased? Yeah. Uh, 1920, Je uh, hmm. Jeff, Thanks. for $30,000. Uh, there was significant remodeling done because it was a furniture company, second, third, fourth floors. It was uh, remodeled by the Masons themselves and with the help of Langdon Holy Architects of Toledo. The first floor is occupied still by a furniture company. And the second floor is rental of law offices, Masonic club room and library. Third floor occupied by the lodge. Fourth floor is the dining room. Structure has a basement that was rare um, for that time period and is only air conditioned approximately five years ago. And, and uh, that must have been from 2001. And I'm dealing with that right now. We had seven air conditioners and then a couple months ago, only two worked. So we had to fix the tenants and we're working on another one now. And this morning, the problem with drainage and stuff, and uh, Neil Gearhart and I, his, his crew, we opened up that sewer for the first time ever. So it was a, it was a virgin sewer, if you, want, <laughs> if you may. That's funny. And uh, opened that up, that and then opened, well, who knows, 1903. And uh, 
they had this old flap down in there where they had the city had a backwater thing and that thing broke off in there and that's been clogging our that's what's been causing our problem so mm -hmm. we're working on trying to fix that that's some historical research there. <laughs> yeah, you peeked out. Archaeology. Yeah. It didn't have a clean out, so you had to break the pipe to get in and got his camera in there. It was amazing stuff. Um, so we we do have uh, five Masonic bodies that are still in there. It's the Wood County Lodge, 112. We have a Crystal Chapter, 157, Royal Arch Masons. The Greenwood Chapter is the Order of the Eastern Star. Bowling Green Council, number 124, and uh, a chapter of De Malay that was chartered in 1923, and uh, uh, we just recently started that up again. So, that's it. Great. Thank, thank, you, you, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. So, you're going to do that for the building of the month, you said? The Masonic? Well, I'd like to submit it. Yeah. Okay. And your house, maybe, sounds like? Well, I'll just wait on it. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Good. There's more extensive Thank history you. on the wall over there. Oh, I see. This is from 2008. I didn't catch that, as you said. That's when that wall was right, that right. But, but it gives you all that information. Yeah, good. Yeah. I will um, scan this and send it to everyone with the minutes. Great, thank you. Um, I should mention too, I um, attended the library. Um, the Wood County Library Historic Preservation, uh, Marnie Pratt put together uh, to talk about the uh, collection uh, in, in, in the public library. And, Probably many of you have, have been over there and used that space. Um, I, I hadn't so much, um, but but there's a lot of really interesting things. There will be another workshop uh, that that she's putting together in September. I don't have the date on that. Uh, I, I, I think you may have sent that to me, Heather. Uh, it's on our agenda, I believe, is what you're referring to, the digital yep. resources. It's, it's, yep, it's September 19th, 2 okay. o'clock. So if anybody's interested in, in that, you have to sign up in advance uh, if you want to uh, uh, be there for, for that um, workshop. <laughs> okay. Um, Rose? <laughs> okay. Um... An update to the um, the article I wrote on the um, Trinity United Methodist Church was that when I was talking to the church historian, Beverly Minor, um, she said that there's been some talk about um, historic, seeking historic designation for the church. Um, and I think that um, there's some confusion between um, national historic designation for the folks that are thinking about it at the church um, and the city of Bowling Green historic designation. So I sent an email to um, the leadership team leader um, telling her that I had written the article and that if anyone on the leadership team or the pastor wants more information about the Bowling Green uh, historic designation process, that um, perhaps a member of the Historic Preservation Commission could come and give a presentation or answer questions for them. Um, so I, uh, the person who's the leadership team chair um, passed the email on to the pastor and I haven't heard back from her yet. Um, let's see, so I, I uh, Chris sent to um, Heather and uh, Cheryl and um, Dick, is it Dick? Dick Martin. Martin. Dick, Dick Martin. Martin. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, uh, what she sees as the upcoming buildings of the month. Um, and I, I, I have a question about that. 
But so September is Trinity United Methodist Church. Cheryl wants to do both 707 West Worcester, which is the home with the big um, drive-through portico thing. Um, it's a big white home at the corner of maybe Eberly, Eberly and West Worcester Street. Okay, uh, Alta Cotting Cal owns it. Oh. Um, and Cheryl wants to do one on that. And then also on 811 West Worcester Street, which is the great big brick home that is just to the west of Alta Cotting's home. So it's it was proposed that Cheryl do those in October and November. And then Dick said he would do First Presbyterian Church for um, December. He's a member there. Um, Chris also said uh, here, a list of buildings that she thinks would be good to highlight um, and asked any of us who's that little subcommittee working on building of the month. Um, she asked, suggested we contact her if we'd like to take these buildings on. Uh, the Claisel, the Millican Hotel, South Main School, the original schoolhouse at BGSU, um, the detention home, which I think is probably um, at the corner of, it's West Worcester Street at the corner of. That might be Eberly. Yeah, I think that's Eberly. Yeah, <clears throat> Eberly, I think. Okay. Um, and the windmill house. So I just wonder, because the building of the month in August was a residence, and it's proposed here that buildings of the month in October and November will also be residences, and those are flanked by two churches. I think it might be interesting to break it up a little and have either October or November be the Masonic building or another business type building mm -hmm. rather than more houses and churches. So that's just, I, I guess I could send that suggestion to Chris maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think that's a good idea, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Um, I was wondering if we could get, if the friends could get the minutes, we get the agenda in advance of the meeting, but we don't get the minutes. So we don't have, we never see the minutes. Um, so is it possible for the minutes to be shared with the friends? Oh, absolutely. They're in public record. We just they're a draft form until the commission approves it. Uh, so I okay. guess it's kind of a All right. toss up whether you yeah, want the dr draft or approved. right. Uh -huh. Okay. That would be, um, it'd be the month or the few days after our meeting. Is that okay? okay? Uh, that's not helpful. I think oh, yeah. because I can't bring up, can't prepare. Yeah. I can't yeah. prepare. So um, if, if the friends could get the draft, I at least would like the draft okay so that i can come to meeting better prepared sure. we can make that uh, specified on the uh, minutes that this is only a draft a draft yeah, yeah. uh-huh okay <laughs> thanks um let's see i i think in last month's meeting that there was concern expressed about what is going to happen to the south main school building and i think that someone on the commission suggested that the commission contact the owners or express concern or share concerns with somebody somehow about what's going to be done with that building. So did that happen? Um, to my knowledge, no. I was the one that expressed concern, um, and I, I did not uh, make a contact. Um, uh -huh. I don't think it's transferred yet. It's not. It's still under the current ownership, uh -huh. so we. I don't, I don't personally know who's buying it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Unless somebody else does. Okay. Well, um, David regularly looks at property mm -hmm. transfers, so I'll ask him to keep his eye out for that property and um, and then maybe let you guys know Good. when Good. that property transfer yeah. occurs. Discuss what form these, because uh, we talked, you talked about other buildings too, what form this kind of expression of concern yeah right? and how we can make that public enough yeah, public. so that it makes a difference uh, other than just complaining um, well and i agree that um the corner grill is so iconic right that it would just be a shame for that building to disappear from the bowling green landscape um so i maybe that could be a discussion point for 
the next HPC meeting. Okay, we can do that. Um, on September 16th, the information that I saw about the opening big event of the BGSU homecoming said that several blocks of Court Street are going to be, um, you know, maybe blocked off or something. So if Nina Vaughn's home is approved by then, because um, the planning commission is going to meet on the 7th, I don't know when the city council meets. It won't be a while because they have to give it a public uh, hearing more, and they have to give 30 days advance oh, okay. of that right. scheduling. So, so it'll that, be a while. That won't fit in because um, that would be cool. Yeah, <laughs> no, I agree. And yeah, yeah. Well, we could put up a sign saying it's been nominated. Yes, uh, yes. Um, approved, and then right as I was coming over here today, one of the residents of, um, of South Buttonwood um, approached me and handed me some information about the proposed zoning changes um, and expressing concern about how the proposed zoning changes may impact the mm, historic mm, character of, um, of a lot of blocks in the city of Bowling Green. Um, so uh, I would love to address that because I've heard that several times and probably from the same person. Um, but I think we also pointed out the historic preservation language is exactly the same. We would love somebody with concerns about their property to come in here and start the process of designation. And that way, you know, it's protected under that overlay zoning. Uh -huh. So none of that language is changing. So it's a great way for people to really maybe get the word out about that this mm -hmm. exists. And, you know, we've only had one owner so far request that designation. And we understand it's a lot of information, but um, but I'm glad you brought that up because it, again, it's the same process, same language in 150, which is the zoning code. And of course, 158 is a different chapter, but it's meshed with mm -hmm. 150. Okay, great. I think that's a fabulous suggestion to encourage historic property owners to apply um, so that they get the designation um, because then the commission would have to approve, like I'm concerned about demolition in the middle of a block that's yes. that's got a historic feeling and having, you know, in certain areas of Cleveland or in Ann Arbor, there's um, contemporary homes that are built that, and right up to the sidewalk basically mm -hmm. because there's no um in the new in our new proposed zoning code there will be no setback of not much not compared to what there is now so anyway just wanted to alert you to well, i think that's why we want to um pursue the the uh, overlay district um but it's just going to take a while to get that actually happening. So the individual homes, um, if they need, need protection, we would like to um, help them, help them have that. Is there any way we could get copies of any kind of proposed zoning change? Oh, yeah, it's all, it's all on our website. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep, I can send you the link. And um, I went to the, there was quite a lot of discussion <clears throat> regarding the proposed change from R2 to um pedestrian walking district i think is the name of the new proposed one and the, the what's currently proposed stretches all the way from uh po road to sandridge road and covers blocks you know multiple blocks east and west of um, main street so um and the next meeting of the historic area of the planning commission is wednesday the 7th and um there will be people there commenting. So it might be interesting for the Historic Preservation Commission to have a representative there, other than me. <laughs> <laughs> what is the date? My computer just- uh, September 7th at seven o'clock. That's one of my meetings too that, I, that I'm the staff liaison for. So I wanna let you know. Okay. I think that's all I had mm -hmm. to say today. <laughs> um. I think it would be good to have one of us there. I'm not sure that I can do it. Do we have anybody that's available? I need to look. I should be able to do it. Great. Thank you, Jeff. And if if you can't, let us know. We can know. Okay. 
you can uh, try to locate another member. Okay, thank you for those comments. Um, let's go ahead and and work through our rest of our agenda, and then if there's any more um, uh, comments, um, we can we can do that in the lobby visitation. Um, the interpretive signage project planning um, the ad hoc committee um, has that. Uh, to my knowledge, that we have not progressed any farther, but I don't know where we're at. Uh, Heather, can you tell? No, us? I think Chris said that in her email that since she's been ill all month, she hasn't been able to get with Christina, so that they would hopefully do that next month. You are absolutely correct. <laughs> Thank you. I I didn't read that one. Um, so we'll we'll uh, table that um, until next meeting, and, and hopefully we can move forward th with that rather quickly afterwards. Um, I know we are working towards a deadline if we're going to apply for grants um, that we need to have that kind of in place. <clears throat> um, public relations educational projects. Uh, number one, 19th annual Living History Day at the Wood County Museum grounds, August 27th at three o'clock. We encourage uh, everyone to go if they can. 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. 2 to 3, yes, thank you. Um, open Doors, Ohio Open Doors, that's uh, September 19th. And um, I just got your message on this, uh, Heather, about the... Uh, Press release, um, this will be um, an open house from two to four in, in the Carter Carter House uh, adjacent to the library. Um, and I know I've been in there once, but I, I, I'd love to go. Well, actually, if Marissa doesn't mind, she could talk a couple minutes about the partnership. Um, Wood County Historical Museum um, is a partner along with the library. And then of course, um, Historic Preservation Commission, we are supporting that event. So the press release lists all of our various open door events. Great. Would you like to? Yeah, if you don't mind, I think that'll, that'll be good. Give us more detail. Thank you. Hi, Marissa from the Wood County Museum, for those who don't know. Uh, so Ohio Open Doors event is a collaboration effort coming out of the Ohio History Connection down in Columbus. Um, to open doors to underrepresented people who might not normally come to events. Uh, so you, depending on your organization, you sign up to have one of those events at your place. And I know the library is opening up the Carter House. Um, the Wood County Museum is collaborating uh, with the Wood County Ag Venture this year. And we are opening our museum up from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. to the general public free of charge to come through and tour. Um, our tie to Ag Venture specifically with that one is that we are the former poor farm of the county, and we have an exhibit currently on uh, up on exhibit about that poor farm history. Uh, so we have decided to do a, just a joint collaboration effort with that Ag Venture and Ohio Open Doors to just create just a giant event. Also, <laughs> September seventeenth is a busy day, uh, so it's Ag. That's also Ag Venture. Um, that is also Smithsonian Magazine Museum Day, and it is something else that I am forgetting at this moment. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I just know it is a very busy day um, that day. So any questions about Ohio Open Doors for me? I'm just reading your oh. press release as, <laughs> as we speak. Um, you want me to read any of this? I don't know. Maybe not. We can, we can just... Uh, that will be out. Uh, it's on our website, right? No, we will be putting it out in the city e news in September. So we're helping to promote it. And there, the um, there's discussion about the agriculture being such a vital industry for Wood County. We, of course, know it is uh, corn, soybeans, wheat. Uh, um, in our own backyards, many specialty crops. Uh, you probably wrote this, right? <laughs> um, uh, family farms with cattle, chickens, pigs, and so forth. Have you ever heard of a poor farm? Get a chance to visit the Wood County Museum and see what history you can uncover from these former public charity poor farm sites. So, that sounds great. Thank you.
Okay. Um, we'd already talked about the digital resources workshop on the 19th. Uh, number four, if these walls could talk, researching property history, September 21, uh, from two to three at the WCDPL. Um, I think it's just good to remind us of all these interesting things. Yeah, that's a repeat of the one that I went to, uh, I guess it must be in July. Mm -hmm. um, audio tour. No update, Chris wrote in her email. Was that something Chris was working on or Christina? I... She was work. Chris was working on that um, with the gentleman that she knows from Toledo That's that right. offered that up. Okay. Um, historic tax credit workshop. Um, that winter of 2022 or 2023. Was that this winter? Well, she was, Chris was thinking of putting something together. It says in our, our agenda 2023. Yeah, I saw that. I, um, I'm assuming it's after after the new year, but okay. I'm not sure when when uh, when she was planning for that. Okay. But we'll get more detail on okay. that soon. Um, tell your BG history session. Um, another project that we've been thinking about. Um, I don't think do we, we I think it's any... Chris and Christina again. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the take a hike program. So a lot of a lot of good ideas. Uh, we just need time to pull them all off. Um, um, we'll keep those on our agenda. Okay. Um, anybody else have something to share with us today? Uh, well, I know Cheryl's here now. Do you Cheryl. have anything to add, Cheryl? Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you, Cheryl. I'm sorry I didn't put your name with your face. Uh, okay, thank you. Getting out of work is always difficult. Um, so as a follow-up, I'm doing two property researches for the building of the month um, research. So a couple of questions have come up and I, I'm looking for advice or guidance. So uh, I've done some research, come up with some great stories on each resident. So how do, um, how are we, how do I um, contact the owner to get permission to give up their story and take pictures of their house, you know, and put it out to the public. I, I don't have a problem knocking on the door and saying what we're doing, but I feel as I'm a volunteer, I'm not a member of the HPC. I don't know if that's my place to start representing the city of Bowling Green. So I'm looking for guidance on that. Um, there's plenty of pictures available about 707 West Wooster, but um, 811, I don't, I have not found any pictures of that. So we would have to start from scratch. And I don't think people would like random strangers showing up, taking pictures of their house. So um, advice, guidance okay. is what I'm looking for here. Any thoughts? Either Chris or Heather, I'm probably, probably something good to, to document, like, in other words, it is like a process since this will be going on. Because I would want to do the same thing with the property owner where I think the the original house was. But if it was tempted as a member, would you know, going up and knock on the door and say who I was, you know, and and just talk to them about what they know about their property and any ruins of a house. I feel comfortable, though, but I understand your position. Yeah. So can we can we annoy to you as the uh, one of our official friends of the HPC? I mean, can that be uh, something that would uh, carry any kind of um, weight with our public, or would they still be concerned? I'm looking um, at you, Heather. <laughs> I know that's why <laughs> another um, option that I was thinking of just to get you off the hook a little bit. Um, um, I thought I could submit my write up, you know, a couple paragraphs or whatever, and just submit it. And then, you know, somebody could take, you know, the verbiage to the homeowner and, and say, and this it, is what we've discovered. We'd like to publish this little story. You know, do you have anything to add? Do you, do you know this? And maybe they'll get excited and agree at that point. But, you know, well, we could, whatever you want to do, we could, um, we could send a message or a note or a, 
-hmm. an email if you have an email from officially from um, probably from Chris just saying that we are we would like to research uh, and and take photos uh, and would we have permission for you to come and do that uh, maybe that would 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 uh, a lot of the research is already. The done. other thing is there any is there any friends that know the individual that are friends of the friend, you know that maybe know Ro the Rose has um, you know. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't mind, you know, meeting her and that that house has been published numerous times over the years. I found a big article from the 50s, you know, that a similar organization had done about her house. The the 811 one is there's no reference to it anywhere. Um, I did I did finally figure out who the original owner was and who built the house and a little bit of the story. But as far as the present owners, I don't know if they have a clue, you know, what's going on. But maybe they do. I don't know. So I don't know their name. I don't know their phone number. So other than knocking on the door, I'm I'm stuck. This this is eight eleven West Wooster. Yeah. Eight eleven West Wooster. It's the big brick house back in the like the farm. Still has the barns back there, and it's right as you go around the bend. Up. On the left side, for building. As you're headed towards a hospital, as you make that that turn. No, it's brick. It's red brick. It has the big stone fence around it. Yeah. It's yeah. just actually past Johnning. It's the next one. I don't know. I just randomly picked that one because it's always fascinated me. Yeah. It's like hidden back there. And it's like, how did a farm end up in the middle of Bowling Green? <laughs> that's a good that's a good it's question. Just... <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can figure it out. I think I like the idea of having a draft first for them mm -hmm. to react to, and they might pr appreciate that mm -hmm. if they don't have a lot of that information. We can start from there. Okay. And I'll, I'll write something up and send it over to you guys. And yeah, okay. great. Let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. I just looked on the um, the auditor's website and found the owner's name or the taxpayers. Okay. Oh, I thought you said you didn't know them. Okay, got it. Sorry, I misunderstood. Okay. Any other um, discussion? Lobby discussion? Visitation? Yeah, Marty. Thank you. We I um I mentioned to the um commission at one of our last meetings how helpful it was for, for us to have that discussion with you. Uh what Maybe two months ago, I forgot when we did, did that, Heather. But but uh, you've got you've done a beautiful job with with uh, with signs, and uh, we'd love to have you be. I would love to have you be part of a future plan and discussion. Are you are you the one, or uh, are there other people that? Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. I've figured out that I can't attend the uh, dedication of the on the seventh uh, on the seventeenth. Seventh is okay, but the, oh, the, the one at the homecoming, the, the, the uh, gateway. Okay, the gateway. The homecoming event that I have to attend at the same time. I, I will. I'll I, probably try to go to. I, I'm sure yes. I will be there also. So I think we'll be represented. Maybe um, Chris and Christina can come. Mm -hmm. um, we are at the unusual moment of being done early today. Uh, 
we never are done early, but uh, unless there's any other comments, I uh, would see if we Make have a motion, motion that we adjourn. Okay, thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.